Hi, everybody, and welcome back to a new edition of NESPA's New Depths podcast. My name is Dominic Mundy. I'm the executive director of the Northeast Spa and Pool Association. And today I am joined by Chris Rauschenbach, um, new face to the industry. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, maybe not, um, but certainly a uh, new face to the pool construction industry. Absolutely. Uh, Chris is the owner of Pura Vida Outdoor Living. Um, he's got a long career in the pool industry in multiple areas. Uh, right. So, Chris, when we ran into each other at our Congress of Committees, which is something we could talk about a little bit for everybody who might not be familiar with what that is, sure. um, but it's a, it was an event here at, at the office with about 50 people mm-hmm. working on, on uh, strategies for the association, and we're talking about your new business and how long you've been in, in the industry overall, and thought, wow, that's pretty interesting. Someone with your experience um, kind of starting new right now, a uh, new venture. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be interesting to talk about for everybody, and I know you're really passionate about the association, so I am. we can talk about that as well. Yep. But why don't you introduce yourself, um, your background a little bit for everybody. And we'll sure, sure. So uh, kudos to Dom first for pronouncing, pronouncing my name correctly. Uh, many people <laughs> get it wrong. Uh, my name is Chris Rauschenbach. Uh, I am currently the owner of uh, Pure Vita Outdoor Living. Uh, my uh, experience in the industry goes way, way back. I kind of was born into the industry. Um, my family started a company called Seaboard Industries. We were uh, a chemical repackager in the textile industry when we started uh, back in 1947 and then uh, kind of grew into the pool market in the 70s, uh, and that was before my time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were one of the first ones to bring uh, lithium hypochlorite to the market, which is still my favorite sanitization method. Um, unfortunately, it's no longer made. Uh, and then shortly, uh, you know, later in the 70s, we started, uh, you know, distributing equipment and um, parts for the industry. Uh, my father g- became involved in the late 70s. Um, he retired in 2004. My brother and I took the company over and we spent, you know, many years up until 2015, um, you know, selling and, and, and taking care of uh, contractors, retailers, uh, professional service people in the industry from uh, you know Delaware to Massachusetts uh, and out on Long Island, and then we were able to uh, complete a acquisition to uh, Pool Corp SCP. Um, I worked there for uh, just over five years, um, had a great time, and uh, this summer um, decided you know uh, had a chance to kind of reflect and figure out what I was going to do. Um, and I looked at some opportunities outside the industry, and I kept coming back to the pool industry. Um, I, as Dom said earlier, I'm passionate about this industry. Uh, there are so many good things about this industry. Um, we have craftsmen that, you know, day in, day out, are building exquisite projects from complete backyards to pools, as well as uh, service technicians that are working on pools, um, you know, every day. And, and these pools have to be safe. So, yeah, so basically, um, you know, pools are changing today and, you know, they're not the same as they were back in the 80s. The the pools back then were, um, you know, somewhat simpler, uh, one skimmer, two returns and, and somewhat bulletproof today with technology advancing, um, hydraulics uh, and all the different things that go into creating masterpiece uh, pieces. Everyone wants bigger and better. Um, and the creative designs uh, specialists in the industry are able to do that. But along with that comes regulation, uh, doing things properly, following code. Um, and that's something that NESPA, uh, you know, led by Dom and, and all the, the local chapters are passionate about, uh, you know, the communication and making sure that the um, builders and service trade are following the pro- proper pr- protocols. So that's, I, so as I was trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to do, as I said earlier, I was, I was, I just kept coming back to the pool industry. Um, I have chlorine in my blood and I've been able to sell and service, uh, the best of the best, uh, you know, like I said, from, uh, you know, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, Long Island territories, and I'm able to, um, work alongside those, uh, contractors, as peers, they're they're helping mentor me, and um, they're excited to share their knowledge. As most of these contractors are with Nespa, they they donate and value you know their valuable time um, into teaching, especially at the Atlantic City show as well. So I, I decided to uh, open up 
and, and try and, and we're going to build and renovate um, some gunite and fiberglass pools and nice. I'm looking forward to you know working with these people that I've sold for so many years. It's got to be really interesting and, and let me just say the, I've done maybe 15 of these. Nespa's put together about 15 podcasts so far and we're, and we're still going with it. Um, listen to a lot of the other podcasts that are out there mm-hmm. in the industry. Had I mean, talk to people all the time and it's amazing how consistent that idea of the chlorine being in the blood that I service pools in college and then I went off to go do the thing I was studying for mm-hmm. and five years later I was servicing pools again and building a business or working for a business or going into the manufacturing sector mm-hmm. or whatever it is but it, there's a pullback that there, seems there to happen. Is. And- you know, I mentioned it earlier. I mean, I, I really was born into the industry. Um, you know, Nespa back then, my, my grandfather was, I think, number three on the plaque out there as uh, the, the third president of Nespa. Jeez, I, I don't know if that was the 60s or 70s, but, um, you know, and then the then secretary of Nespa was a travel agent by trade. So as a kid, when we went away on trips, Yes, they we, we were not we didn't have internet, so we did have to go to the travel agent to right. pick up our plane tickets. Uh, Lynn Cantor was the Nespa, I think, secretary back then. So okay. I had some you know Nespa integration uh, even as a kid. So yeah, it's it's been fantastic ride. We have a thing we do at the show every year called the Quarter Century Club. It's a mm-hmm. it's a meeting. It's a breakfast, and you have to be in the industry for twenty five years and have some connection to the association, right? And there's a lot of folks there who have been in the industry for 40, 50 years. But there's a lot of folks who've been there for 25 to 30 who are younger than me. <laughs> because yep. they, they start at, you know, we, yep. said, we had to say, like, you can't start counting until 18. I've been in a truck since I was nine. <laughs> I think you know? I started, yeah. uh, you know, I, my, first, my first actual job in the pool industry was for B&B Pools up in Chestnut Ridge, class act operation. And, and uh, I spent a summer... Um, you know, cleaning and, and servicing pools with uh, one of the owners, one of the Bagans, and, and he would take me on the gunite jobs. And mm-hmm. so I, I really was, I, I did, like you said, I started early uh, in this industry. Yeah. So what are you noticing now? You're starting, uh, you, you put your shingle out for Pure Vita. You're doing service and construction, renovation, a lot of renovation, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, in some levels, it's a, probably a great time, right? The market demand is there. We all know that that people are having a hard time catching up. And at the same time, mm-hmm. there's a lot of challenges that estab- well-established and successful companies um, are, are dealing with as far as supply chain, as far as labor and whatnot. Correct. Um, what's that experience like? Because you, know, you have all this history in the industry, right? Mm-hmm. So you got relationships, you got connections, you got that kind of stuff going. But you're still sort of jumping in at an interesting time. Yes. So... Uh, there's a lot to that question. Um, you know, I have a, a, a wife and two children, and, and uh, starting a, a business at this age is always challenging. Um, Dom mentioned it. You know, the, the supply chain constraint um, is key, but but also too, you know, you have uh, uh, an inflationary time that is that is hitting us. Um, almost we're at hyperinflation. So, you know, not just for homeowners buying a pool and seeing elevated prices. But also trying to start a business in the state of New Jersey, um, you know, your, your gas expenses are up. Um, you know, we're, we're going to talk later about health insurance and uh, all the other things that go into operating a business. Um, I have a lot of background in uh, the finance end of uh, running a business as well as the operational end as well. But the, the biggest thing for me is, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and, you know, they say... Learning is the mother, or I'm sorry, re- repetition is the mother of all learning. Well, in, w- when you're actually building a pool, you kind of don't have that luxury because you don't want to make a mistake. Uh, it could go badly for the homeowner and it could go badly for sure. you. So um, for me, the biggest challenge now is, is trying to get up to speed um, you know, on all the regulations, all the codes, um, you know, the product knowledge. I spent 27 years uh, selling the products from the best manufacturers in the industry, I can tell you the part numbers um, and I can tell you where they go, but um, I need to get to the point where I know exactly how each product aligns, uh, especially when you're talking about flow rates and and all the other things that go into making a safe pool. So um, the biggest challenge for me is uh, right now, it's the learning aspect and and knowing um, everything there is about the actual pool. Um, I think, um, obviously, you know, we're all experiencing it. The, the labor shortage is going to be challenging. 
Um, everybody has way too much work um, on their, their plates. So um, for me, you know, finding talent and also working with subs and right. uh, some of the, the um, rest of the trade is, is going to be challenging. But we're going to get through it. I mean, you talked about how much, how diff- how much pools have changed, how different they are from the 80s. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you can go decade by decade, but certainly a, a huge market shift, you know, in the mid-2000s after the VGB Act and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, but pool construction now is way more complicated at every level, both for safety and for efficiency and for performance. So you have, you've always had, you know, the, the, the phrase we would always say is you've always had those pools hung over a cliff in Southern California, right? Yep. There's, there's, there's <laughs> that, right? Yep. But then there's the pool that gets put into the suburban backyard. Mm-hmm. It could be vinyl, fiberglass, or concrete. Um, that is built differently. The, the, the floor has come so far up. It has to meet so many yep. standards, again, for safety and efficiency and, and performance matters. Everybody, um, regardless of how much you're spending on the pool, expects that that pool's gonna, mm-hmm. gonna turn over a certain way and that everything's gonna work you know, with a certain efficiency. They expect their service companies to be there. You know, when they say right. they're gonna be there, you know, it's, it's that thing we talk about all the time that we're not, you're not competing against the pool guy down the street, you're competing against Amazon, right? Or you're competing against you know, I'm whatever. seeing it. I'm seeing it already. Yeah. Yep. And and you're correct. I mean, you know, just specifically with main drains, right? We just had a code that changed, and you know, like Dom said, you have to, you know, the the homeowners relying on you to give them the information um, so that they can continue to use their pool in a safe manner. And right. you know, if you're not looking at the drain and, and making sure that the cover meets code or that it's maybe hit its shelf life, depending on what side of the industry you're on, you know, you're you're you could be you know, liable for that. You could be, um, you know, injuring uh, a homeowner's yeah. child or, or one of them. And so it's, it's very, very tough. And, you know, you mentioned flow rates and turnover. I mean, I can tell you 20 years ago, nobody was thinking about that. But now you really have to think about that because the pumps that are being built are awesome, but they can suck a golf ball through a garden hose. So, you know, if you don't yeah. hook it up properly, you can you know, right. you, you can really have some problems down the road. So, uh, you know, my I'm going to be spending a lot of time, especially over the winter, taking up all of Nespa's resources, uh, getting yeah. up to speed, um, so, you know, learning. Uh, so let's talk about that for a minute, because you, when you said, all right, I'm, this is, like you said, self-reflection, mm-hmm. what am I going to do now? You decided this is what you were going to do. And obviously you're familiar with Nespa mm-hmm. and Metro Chapter in particular. Yep. But... One of the things you said was, all right, if I'm going to do this, I got to jump in with them because I don't know if you knew every resource that was available, but you were like, I know they've got mm-hmm. resources, information, programs, and I need, to, I need to capitalize on that. Good decision? I think so. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and I'm not I'm being biased, paid. But... I'm not being paid. Uh, no, Dom, I, you know, I can't say enough with the, uh, the chapter, you know, with the Nespa Association down here and, of course, the Metro, which I'm deeply aligned with, um, you know, taking over as treasurer this year. The, as Dom said, I, I was kind of forced to really dig into everything that the um, Nespa Association has to offer. And in doing so, I, I uncovered a, you know so many programs, and I happened to be down at the Congress of Committees, and we worked on the programs, and they were trying to um, you know strategize into all right, what what programs aren't you know here already? What, you know what isn't ne- yeah. what isn't Nespa doing? Um, and we really at the end of the day, Nespa's programs are fantastic, and for me. Um, you know, it starts with, you know, one, I have to look at health insurance for myself now mm-hmm. um, and, you know, my possible, you know, my, form, my future employees. So uh, they just teamed up with a company called Meridio and Meridio's, honestly, the, the, the pricing is fantastic. Um, I'm going to be talking with them to learn more about what they have to offer. But uh, just, you know, high level, their pricing is very, very aggressive. So if you're looking to offer benefits to your employees um, or making a change, you might want to look at it. Um, insurance, one of the biggest things before I even thought about doing everything, you know, obviously you have to become a, a licensed contractor in the state. So I did that, but uh, I had an insurance agent that I've used for, you know, my company, my other company, Seaboard, for years. Great outfit. Um, and when I mentioned to him that I was going into construction, he kind of said, I don't know. I don't know if we're a fit. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, I got to go out to market and check and see if I can find something that's going to work for you. 
Um, I happen to be sitting on the board of Metro with two insurance guys, um, you know, Middleton and, and Rue, uh, Dave Concador and Rich Gaynor, and ended up picking David's brain. And, you know, he ended up presenting to me um, an, an entire safety program. Um, and one of the biggest things, too, Aqua Magazine a few months back had an article about pool pop up and subsidence. And you should never have an exclusion in your policy regarding that. And so I read that article and I said, oh, my God, you know, here I am getting into the gunite market and mm-hmm. I really have to understand all all there is to do it, you know, all there is to know about it. And, um, you know, obviously the, you know, Rue and David um, helped put me um, in touch with the right carriers, um, explained the process along the way. Um, so the reason I'm getting at Nespa has uh, great, you know, communication with CNA and other insurance carriers that sp- Best, you know, are specifically designed to handle pool right. trade and construction. Um, marketing, I mean, the, the, the programs that, that uh, NESPA has to offer are outstanding. And then we talk, I don't know if you want to get into the, the AC the, show. The marketing but. piece I'll just mention mm-hmm. is interesting for that small business owner who doesn't have their own marketing team or, or resources. Yep. We have both this marketing toolkit online, which is like a how to how to maximize your exposure as a member of the association mm-hmm. and, and different things like that. And then we have a partnership now you were mentioning with um, a company called OMG National, which is a small business, you know, social media and other types of, of marketing that at a discount because you're a NESPA member, yep. they'll help put those programs together for you and manage them. And these are all things that... We, we try to have a package of, of benefits for business owners that everybody doesn't need everything. Mm-hmm. But if you need it, we hope there's something here for you. And that's just one lane of what we yep. try to put together. But there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity. And listen, you know, the, um, when, you, when you look at what's involved with NESPA, the, the annual fee, pretty much you're getting your money back. It's like any other credit card that you pay an annual fee. The resources are there for you to take advantage of. And it basically negates any of the annual fee that you're going to be looking at um, paying. But, you know, companies like OMG, I'm going to explore because half our business is done online now. Right. Um, people are focusing on Facebook and Instagram and, and all the other social media channels to find their next pool uh, project, you know, contractor. Right. So, you know, we have to look at that. Um, and then, you know, the, the AC show, <laughs> I can't say it's enough. Coming up. I, uh, I registered already and... I, you know, this year, I've been busy at the AC show for the last 27 years, and this year, I think I'm going to be busier because I'm on the other side now. I'm going to take advantage of all the classes, and when I tell you, I think there was 127 classes or something that Nesp was putting on, and these are being presented by legends in the industry who are giving back their time, so thank you to all those contractors and manufacturers, reps, and and, and just everybody that's, that's doing that. But there's a class for everyone. Um, it's not just on trade. There's also business. There's marketing. There's leadership. Divert, every, whatever it is that you want to learn about, um, whether yeah. you're the owner of the business or your people, they have rookie classes. It's, mm-hmm. it's fantastic. So I suggest you sign up for the VIP because you're going to get your money's worth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you'll have the encore that you can follow up online. Well, that's, and that's, that's a new thing awesome. this year is this uh, VIP experience mm-hmm. bundle or, or, or pass that uh, attendees can take advantage of. Uh, if you're coming in and you know exactly what you're coming for and you want to get exactly that, then that's great. But if you like to look at all the technical classes, the business programs, um, stuff that's happening on the floor. You know you're going to the welcome party. This is an inclusive way for you to buy one pass that gives you all that stuff. Plus, as Chris mentioned, access to not the same programs. Mm-hmm. So we're not recording the conference, but additional content mm-hmm. that will be available online after the show from a lot of the people you just mentioned sure. as far as stars in the industry and people that are, are really yep. loyal to, to the show. So it's a great opportunity. There's lots of information about it on, on the Absolutely. website. Absolutely, yep. Fantastic. And I'm looking forward to I'm going down on Sunday uh, and I will be in class and um, spending a lot of time on the show floor and, and um, you know, going in and out of classes, which yeah. I think the new format's going to work out well, too. And I'm excited. I read really excited. Uh, in one of the trade pubs today, the, in the editor's little article in the beginning, letter in the beginning, okay. she was saying that, you know, a year ago, missed the shows but was really curious what was going to happen or evolve or change and how people are going to do things differently and you know we did we did the pool and spa experience last mm-hmm. year it was a, everybody was trying to figure that out and didn't know she said now a year now i'm here it's two years 
and I just want to go. <laughs> I just want to be there. I want to shake hands. I want to say hi to people. I want to rebuild those relationships. Um, I think it's going to be think, a flood. I think Atlantic City. Um, I think you know attendance, and, I, and I'm not. I don't know the numbers, but I think you're going to be look, look just like we're probably going to see 115,000 pools built this year. Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, NESPA is going to set records this year in Atlantic City. And to Dom's point, people just want to get out. Um, we haven't seen each other. Um, I was texting with somebody in Florida the other day and says, he says, am I going to see you in Atlantic City? I said, yeah. So it's, we're already starting to talk about, all right, well, when are we going to meet up for a drink? Or when are we going to see each other on the show floor? Yeah. It's going to be a good time. And, and uh, you know, so make sure you sign up and, you know, we're going to have some fun. Yeah, I think there's going to be some technical aspects of the show which might be a little bit different but i think the vibe is going to be there the intention is certainly the same as mm-hmm. it's always been which is to bring the the industry we're together. cool guys we're easy we're, right <laughs> the fun's going to be there yep you know and that's that's uh maybe I, you just said you know when am i going to meet you when am i going to meet you for a drink when am i going to see mm-hmm. you on the floor um I think one of the biggest aspects of the show which is tough to quantify is how important it is for all those people all, you know, 12,000 registered attendees, mostly from the Northeast or surrounding mm-hmm. areas, to relax a little bit in January, right? To yep. let their guard down and, and rebuild those relationships, to commiserate if that's, you know, it's been a tough year. You know, you're not busy for maybe only a couple of weeks this winter. Correct. Um, to kind of let some of that go, to give yourself the space to hear other people's stories, tell mm-hmm. your own, see that vision for what you want to do in, in, in the coming year. And I, and I think a big part of it. there's no way you're, you know, we, I mean, January is always a dead month in the pool industry, but um, we're definitely going to have a winter. So, um, you know, I think you're going to want to be down in Atlantic City and, uh, you know, just they, there's so much there's so much there. There's so many new products hitting the, right. the market for 2022. And um, it, it's going to be exciting. I, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. You and me, you and me both. <laughs> exactly. So you're taking advantage of a lot of the NESPA programs, and I appreciate you talking about mm-hmm. those, and, and we're both very excited for Atlantic City. What are you, uh, let's pull this together with, yep. so you're going to go through Atlantic City and you're coming into 2022, and what do you see in front of you as far as you know, your first full year in business coupled with you know, what your knowledge of the marketplace is, and you know, what are you excited about, or what do you think um, the big challenges are going to be? Well, the challenge, like I said earlier, is uh, getting up to speed with um, just the simple processes along the way, um, you know, whether it's the construction end or the renovation end, um, you know, learning, uh, working with, obviously, the uh, subcontractors. But 2022 is going to be an unbelievable year. Um, we, we are definitely going to continue to see supply constraints. So equipment, uh, you know, fiberglass pools are 30 weeks right now yeah. uh, at a minimum. So th- that's going to be challenging, um, but I think it's going to be a great year. There's still demand. Uh, yeah. People still, you know, money's still cheap. Uh, they're still staying home. They want to renovate and update their backyard. They've been saved. Some of these people, I was on a sales call yesterday, and, and the uh, homeowner said he's, you know, they've saved up for a couple of years, yeah. um, and they feel it's the right time, and they're starting with the pool, and then they're going to do the rest of the patio and backyard. Yeah. and. Um, so I, I think the business is going to be there. It's just trying to pull everything in together and being mm-hmm. able to get the job done on time um, and living up to your commitments. I think from what I've observed, most of the um, from the manufacturers down to distribution are, are reacting and trying to you know catch up within some reason. And while everybody acknowledges that mm-hmm. these things cycle and at some point demand will retract. I haven't heard anybody suggest it's going to happen in 2022. Correct. This is at least this has got at least another 12 months worth of legs on it. Yep, I agree. I think, um, and as Dom said, kudos to the manufacturers. Um, you know, they, they've beefed up their production, uh, and the distribution up here has been fantastic. Um, and you know, I think they've gotten a better kind of stranglehold on the the virus and how to, you know, hit you know yeah. keep up with demand. Um, but even so, you know, we're still seeing. Please get your orders in, even if you have a job, even if you're thinking about, you know, buying a pump or a heater. Um, and there's going to be, you know, the few product lines that are always going to be a challenge, um, yeah. you know, for the next year or two. But I, I think it's going to lighten up, and um, hopefully we can, you know, fix the labor shortage out at the docks in California, and we can get the ships coming in. And, right. um, yeah, we've already ordered our Christmas a lot, gifts. A lot so. of times we talk <laughs> about uh, labor challenges within the industry itself. In this case, this is a... a 
national mm-hmm. issue across a wide swath of in- industries. So it's it's gonna it's gonna be pervasive for a little while. But like you said, demand's gonna be there. Um, I have from again from where I sit, talking to everybody in the industry at every different level. Mm-hmm. The I've been so impressed with how everybody acknowledges the challenges. Everybody's stressed and working harder than they ever have, mm. and yet the industry hasn't regressed overall into a finger pointing, uh, uh, you know, claw scratching, cutthroat. You know, I, I hear all the time manufacturers sizing other companies' pumps just to get the rest of the pad done, mm-hmm. or, or you know, throwing. Um, you know, I got I got five of these five heaters and you really need one okay because i know i'm gonna need some of you later and people doing that stuff to kind of keep everybody going right. um really speaks to not just the character of the industry but the character of the members of our association because mm-hmm. that's where a lot of those networks are formed i said it earlier we're, we're pool people um <laughs> and that just just doesn't mean you know from the retail service and construction it goes to everyone that's working at the distri- you know, distribution um, outlets and manufacturing. Um, as Dom said, you know, the, the, the industry hasn't regressed, and we're doing it with probably 30 to 40 percent less headcount. So everybody's working that much harder, yeah. um, and they just got it done for the past two years. They, 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 and they didn't do it with finger point. They just got it done, um, right. which is amazing. Um, and, you know, companies are seeing some crazy operating profits because <laughs> of that. Um, but... At the end of the day, we're going to continue to move forward, and, right. and um, hopefully, uh, this 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 industry can continue to promote and bring in um, you know students from high school and college level, and let and show them that this is an unbelievable industry. You know mm-hmm. that there is something to be said about pool and spa. It's not you know we're, we're definitely aligned with electric and plumbing and every other trade. Uh, you sure. can do very well in this industry. Um, we just have to continue to push forward. And I know when I was down at the Congress of Committees, um, we were speaking, uh, and, and the Long Island chapter, I think, was pretty successful in um, running a Votech program with one of the colleges out in Long Island. In the so, middle of their second session of it now. And they are, and they're, they're faced with some challenges with COVID. But, you know, after COVID subsides, then uh, hopefully, you know, every other right. local chapter can continue to spearhead that and bring people in continue with the licensing, get people up to speed, because technology is going to continue to evolve, of course. and you need to be trained to handle these pools. And I'm seeing them now. Being out in the field, it, right. it's uh, kudos to all the builders out there. You guys are building <laughs> some masterpieces. And also, too, with the design awards. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Very creative. Excellent. Well, this has been great, Chris. I uh, yep. didn't expect anything less than a good flowing conversation. I know you've got Thank a you. lot of ideas and we could probably keep going forever. Maybe we'll, we'll do this again at some point. Maybe we'll circle back a year from now and kind of hear how. <laughs> Give me a few <laughs> years. It's going to be a go. slow go, please. <laughs> well, this, is, this has been great. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation with, with Chris about the industry, about the association, about where things are headed. Um, looking forward to seeing everybody in Atlantic City at the end of January for the pool and spa show. Um, he'll be on the floor. You can find him and have a conversation yourself. You bet. You bet. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.